What is up guys, it is Nick, and we are back for the final look at Week 3's Sunday NFL Main Slate on DraftKings. A lot of my views still apply to FanDuel, but let's get into this. So starting off at the quarterback position, my thoughts really haven't changed here. Usually with quarterback, thoughts don't change throughout the week. If I'm paying up, it's Pat Mahomes or Drew Brees. It's probably Drew Brees because I don't like to pay all the way up at quarterback. Just not something I like to do. If we're going down, it's either Cam Newton or Matt Ryan. For the purpose of this video, I personally am going Matt Ryan. Um, I, I like his matchup and I like his price. He only needs about 16 and a half points to hit value. It, it's more, it's closer to like 17. It's like 16, what is it? Or is it 17 one? It's 17 one is what he needs for uh, value, which is about two touchdowns and a little under three, like 275 yards. Something like that would get him there, I think. Uh, which, is, which is pretty obtainable in what should be a high paced matchup against New Orleans. Obviously, you want more. <laughs> On a Matt Ryan, I would hope for in the 20s, low 20s, like 22 is what I really hope for from Ryan, um, but obviously I'll take the value if he just gets to 17.1. Cam Newton I do like, um, have considered just paying up for the rushing floor that he provides, but uh, haven't, haven't found myself going there. Pretty much have been all in on Matt Ryan so far. Moving over to running back. If you're going to spend up, it is Alvin Kamara or Todd Gurley. Um, if you're going to step down, it's either Christian McCaffrey or Melvin Gordon. I probably will not find myself doing either of those, playing any of those four, any of those four options. I don't love the value at wide receiver. While there is value at wide receiver, it's not my favorite value. So I'll be stepping down to the $6,500 range will be the first. I love David Johnson for GPPs. You got coach speak little bit of other stuff going on um, I won't be playing him in cash or anything but I do I do like David Johnson this week we have Dalvin Cook out uh, so we'll talk about Latavius Murray here in a second but up here at the top you get of the six of, of the cheap or cheaper uh, running backs you've got Tevin Coleman and Jordan Howard I like them a little bit more over on FanDuel than I do over here on DraftKings um, Coleman wasn't involved as much as I would have hoped last week in the passing game. Uh, so I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach and take the safer bet in uh, Gio Bernard. Um, you save 500 off of Coleman and 600 off of Howard. Um, and I could see them giving Tarek Cohen a little bit more work in this game running the ball if they get up a lot on Arizona. Uh, so the first play that I'm really considering playing is Gio Bernard at 5,900. He should be involved heavily in the passing game as well as uh, rushing the ball. They don't have many options like we've talked about. Uh, they did sign Thomas Rawls, but I don't think any of those guys will really challenge Gio Bernard for a bulk of his carries. Lap Murray became the ultimate value. He's a huge value over at FanDuel at 5,200. I believe that's what he is over there. Uh, DraftKings, he's 58. It's a little bit tougher of a decision. I would have no problem if you wanted to go Jordan Howard or Tevin Coleman over Lat Murray. Uh, Murray shouldn't see a lot of the receiving game, but at 5,800, I think he's just a fair enough value that I'm going to take the shot on him uh, in cash games. But uh, obviously, there is some merit to going Jordan Howard or Tevin Coleman. I haven't actually found myself with enough money to get up to them. Um, and still have the uh, wide receivers that I that I like. Um, stepping down, we have our final couple of plays way down here. At 4,300, we have Corey Clement. Pretty much a lock for me this week. He should see 70%. I don't want to get too extreme. I'm going to say 70% of the running back work. They still have Wendell Smallwood and Josh Adams, so... I'm going to go with 70% of the work for Corey Clement and most of the rush, almost all of the rushing work, like 85% of the rushing work. Uh, so at 4,300, he's pretty much a lock for me. It opens up a lot of things for you, so I will be going with Corey Clement. Stepping down a little bit more, we have Wilkins, the Indianapolis running back, with Marlon Mack out. Wilkins at 3,700 is interesting. I don't think I'll go there. He said 10 attempts and 14 attempts. Um... But I, I don't, 
I don't think I'm going to go there. I'll take a little bit more of a research into it, but he's a guy you can consider. I don't know much about Jordan Wilkins, and I don't know about much about how the uh, how the Colts are going to work this. They should be down in this game to the Eagles, so I don't think they'll be rushing the ball an extreme amount. Uh, so it'll have to be... Wilkins will have to get it done through the air. And he has had some resections for the first two games, and Andrew Luck has shown a propensity since coming back from injury to chuck the that ball down a lot. So I'll look in more into the Wilkins play. I'm not entirely sure I want to do that. But if you do play Wilkins instead of, like, um, Lat Murray, you do open yourself up for going up to Pat Mahomes or getting like AJ Green instead of a mid-tier wide receiver. There, there's a lot of interesting things that it allows you to do. I'm not sure I want to quite do it, but it's heavily in consideration for Jordan Wilkins. GPP flyer, that would be Wendell Smallwood, wherever he is at 3K, min price, should be back up running back. Um, I don't think I'll be playing him, but he's an interesting price at min, or an interesting choice at min price. I think you just go with uh, um, Wilkins if you're coming all the way down here. Moving on to wide receiver, I have a pretty t narrow core at wide receiver. Um, not too much to talk about here. Uh, I like the top options: Michael Thomas and Tyreek Hill. Uh, you will not find me playing Tyreek Hill, though I really like him. You just won't find me playing him. He's too expensive, and I like Michael Thomas way more. But Tyreek Hill, perfectly good play this week. Michael Thomas at 8,900, favorite play. We've talked about this, his targets through two games. We've talked about um, how the Saints are averaging like two and a half yards per run. They just haven't been able to run. And you beat the Falcons through the air with short passes. Uh, and so Michael Thomas will avoid Desmond Trufant. And him and Alvin Kamara should feast on the short passing game. Uh, Julio Jones has become somewhat of a lock. I don't love it. He's going to get Marsh on Lattimore. He has torched Lattimore for, I believe, 93 and 150-something yards um, in their two meetings last year. I'm not in love with it, but at 7,900, it's such a value on Julio that I think I just have to take it with his target share in the offense. I think it's just, it's too good to pass up, is my point, is I don't think I can pass up the the market share that Julio Jones has in that Atlanta offense, and what should be a high-scoring game, um, I think I believe it's 45 receptions in a row that Julio has had without a touchdown. I'm not saying he's due, but eventually he's going to get one, so... Um, maybe this is the week and that would really help, but I never actually play Julio Jones expecting to get a touchdown. You're playing him for the yard equity and you need him to go over 100. You're hoping for, I would say this week, if you exclude his touchdown equity, which hasn't been very high, they've been looking for him more, but his touchdown equity is still not very high. So point is, you're looking for about nine receptions for 111 yards-ish. That would give you... 23 points which would be a fair a fair game from Julio with no touchdown equity uh stepping down the next guy I like is AJ Green at 7500 guy that I really like this week but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit he should get shadowed by James Bradbury uh which is which is a decent matchup for AJ Green and it looks like Andy Dalton has made a concerted effort to look for A.J. Green. Some weeks last week or last year, it looked like Andy Dalton didn't have any interest in throwing it to A.J. Green. And so it's good to see him actually, you know, looking at A.J. Green. Um, I don't have a whole lot of interest in the next group. I do like Milton Aguilar at 6,100. There's just not that many options for Carson Wentz coming back off an of injury. And you beat the Colts through the air. I mean, you could beat them on the ground too, but man, their secondary is terrible. Uh, but I like Will Fuller at 5,900. He's in my shell cash game line right now as I will tinker, final tinkers later today, and then hopefully not tinker tomorrow because usually my Sunday tinkers do not work out well. <laughs> all right, let's move on. So coming all the way down, uh, I do like Allen Robinson at 5,400. Probably not a cash game play. I like Tyler Lockett a little bit more. Um, with Pat Pete not shadowing, 
it makes Allen Robinson a little bit more of an option, but uh, I just prefer Tyler Lockett and his explosive ability. Coming all the way down, like always, I do like D.D. Westbrook and Geronimo Allison, but I'm not going to do it. If I'm stepping all the way down here, there's two guys, two options. One's a little bit more safer than the other. I like Tyler Boyd. Let's see, there he is. Tyler Boyd at 3,700, and I like Calvin Ridley at 3,500. I have narrowed my core down pretty tight at the running back position. Uh, to pretty much Tyler Boyd, Calvin Ridley, Will Fuller, Nelson Aguilar, A.J. Green, Michael Thomas, and Julio Jones. Uh, so not much to talk about there. Those are pretty much my core for wide receiver, and you'll see probably three of those guys in my cash games. Moving on to tight end, it's pretty much just two guys for me at this point. Jack Doyle is out, so Eric Ebron, welcome to the show. I played David Ajoku on the Thursday slate, and I'm annoyed because he was $100 more or $100 cheaper than Ebron, and I would have just played Ebron had I known. Uh, the final guy is 2800 Ricky Seals-Jones. It's just a really good price on Ricky Seals-Jones, so I think he's worth a flyer. He's seen a good market share through the first two games, and that's really what I'm looking for at tight end. Six targets, six targets. If he could catch one that's longer than eight yards, he could have a big game. So, yeah, I like Ricky Seals-Jones. Moving on to the final thing we'll talk about is defense. I think pretty much I'm locking in the Cowboys. It's not a great matchup against the Cowboys, but it should be a slow pace, or it should, not a great matchup against the Seahawks. It should be a slow pace game, and they should have opportunities for a lot of sacks. Uh, you know, playing people against Russ always a little bit worries me, but this offensive line is just atrocious, so I'm going to roll the dice, and I'm going to play the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I don't have many other options there. Uh, the only other guys I like is paying way up. Uh, I do like the Bears, Jaguars, and Vikings, but they're all way up, so I'll take the savings and play the Bear or the the Cowboys defense at 2200. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video, guys. This is the final look for this week. Some things changed, not a lot did. Still love the same plays I loved earlier in the week, but we added in some value running back. So I'll play around with Jordan Wilkins and stuff like that. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We'll have breakdowns of the Sunday night game uh, and maybe the Monday night game as well as well as the betting video going over my favorite bets for the week. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.